over to you dr sanjeev okay uh, good evening friends once again meeting in our evening session and uh, today we have got uh, two small systems competency to be covered and we have got uh, first speaker dr momita who is going to present the competency of uh, musculoskeletal and soft tissue infection right and then after that we'll also go for another that is uh, central nervous system that is going to be presented by dr animiredi so we can start with uh, the first session over to you dr momita welcome thank you sir uh, am i audible yes yes good evening everyone first i would like to thank you sir and vedi sir for organizing such a wonderful platform where we can actually have a good work up which will guide us for the next classes and of course i want to thank my team consisting of dr jigar and dr rekha they have helped me a lot in compiling this whole thing so our competency today is based on the musculoskeletal and soft tissue infections my first competency is 4.1 which states enumerate the microbial agents causing anaerobic infections describe the etiopathogenesis clinical course and discuss the laboratory diagnosis of anaerobic infections this we have put up into five sessions the first session would be general on anaerobes and anaerobic infection so at the end of this session the phase 2 students should be able to define anaerobes describe the features of anaerobic infections enumerate the microbial agents causing anaerobic infections and describe the different methods of anaerobiosis uh, a lot of part would have been covered in the general part earlier so this can be a self directed learning followed by a group discussion and that's a knowledge domain with level up to k then the next session is on gas ganglia so at uh, at the end of this session the student should be able to define gas ganglia enumerate the causative agents of gas ganglia enumerate the virulence factors of prostadium perfringens describe the pathogenesis of gas gangrene describe the clinical course of gas gangrene and describe the diagnostic modalities of gas gangrene this would be a interactive lecture in the knowledge domain and uh, it would be till the know how then the next session is on tetanus so define tetanus and name the causative agent describe the virulence factors of clostridium tetani describe the pathogenesis of tetanus describe the clinical manifestation of tetanus describe the lab diagnosis of tetanus and discuss the management briefly and also discuss the prophylaxis of tetanus this would again be a interactive lecture of 1 hour the next session would be on botulism so define botulism and its type describe botulinum toxin and its uses describe the pathogenesis of botulism describe the clinical manifestation of botulism and describe the lab diagnosis of botulism this would be again another interactive lecture next uh, we have club together under miscellaneous anaerobic infections here we can cover the antibiotic associated colitis and the non sporing anaerobic infection so here the phase 2 student must be able to describe the normal gut flora and its role describe the antibiotic associated colitis and its etiology describe the pathogenesis of antibiotic associated colitis describe the clinical features discuss the diagnostic modalities for antibiotic associated colitis then they should be, uh, be able to enumerate the non sporing anaerobes enumerate the diseases caused by common non sporing anaerobes 
describe the pathogenesis and clinical features of various infections caused by non-sporing anaerobes and discuss the laboratory diagnosis for infections caused by the non-sporing anaerobes. This can be a small group discussion with case-based scenarios. Next session would be, uh, the next competency is 4.2, which is describe the etiopathogenesis, clinical course, and discuss the laboratory diagnosis of bone and joint infection. So here we have broken it into two sessions. The first one is osteomyelitis. So at the end of the session, the phase two students should be able to define osteomyelitis, enumerate the causative agents of osteomyelitis, describe the pathogenesis of osteomyelitis, describe briefly the clinical features of osteomyelitis, and discuss the laboratory diagnosis of osteomyelitis. So this is again an interactive lecture in the knowledge within with uh, know-how uh, because pathogenesis is there. Then septic arthritis or infectious arthritis is the next session. So at the end of this session, the student should be able to define infectious arthritis, enumerate the positive agents of infective arthritis, infectious arthritis, enumerate the risk factors for septic arthritis, describe the pathogenesis of septic arthritis, and describe the clinical features of septic arthritis, and also discuss the laboratory diagnosis of septic arthritis. So this is again an interactive lecture. So, so the, the next competency was on the skin and soft tissue infections where we actually got stumped because uh, it was difficult for us to understand how to proceed, but uh, we did as we thought would be easier as a clinical syndromic approach. So the competency is 4.3. It is described the etiopathogenesis of infections of skin and soft tissue and discuss the clinical course and laboratory diagnosis. This one we have broken down into eight sessions. So the first session is at the general. So at the end of the session, the phase two student should be able to enumerate the organisms of normal skin flora discuss the role of the normal flora of the skin, classify different types of skin and soft tissue infections, describe the different clinical presentation for skin and soft tissue in infections, enumerate the etiological agents of skin and soft tissue infections, and enumerate the various predisposing factors leading to skin and soft tissue infections. So this would be an interactive lecture the next session is on surface infections where we must there are a lot of infection but i we feel we must cover pityriasis versicolor tinea nigra pietra onychomycosis and uh, if we have left out some then we can add so uh, the end of the session the student should be able to enumerate the various surface infection of the skin and its appendages enumerate the microbial agents causing surface infection, describe the microscopic and cultural characteristic of agents causing surface infections of the skin, describe, uh, describe the clinical presentation of the surface infections of skin, discuss the various diagnostic modalities available, and describe the method of sample collection in such cases. So this can again be a small group discussions with case-based scenarios. Then the third session is on superficial skin infections, where we must cover impetigo, erysipela, folliculitis, dermatophytosis, and others are also there. So enumerate various superficial skin infections, enumerate the microbial agents causing superficial skin infections, Describe the morphology of microbial agents causing superficial skin infection. Discuss in brief the pathogenesis of superficial skin infections. Describe the clinical presentation of superficial skin infections. Then define dermatophytosis and its etiology. Describe the morphological and cultural characters of dermatophytes. Enumerate the various clinical types of dermatophytes with their causative agents. 
discuss the various diagnostic modalities available, describe the method of sample collection. The next session is for uh, the cutaneous and subcutaneous infections, which is involving the deeper tissues like the abscesses, cellulitis, the necrotizing fasciitis, myonecrosis, myositis. So here the student should be able to enumerate the microbial agents causing deep tissue infections, discuss in brief the pathogenesis of deep tissue infections, describe the clinical presentations of such infections, discuss approach to diagnosis for such infections. So this again can be a small group discussion with case-based scenario. A subcutaneous mycosis and mycetoma will also come under this sec section. And we can have a separate session as an interactive lecture where we can discuss this SLOs. So the student should be able to define mycetoma, enumerate the microbial agents causing mycetoma and subcutaneous mycosis, discuss the pathogenesis of subcutaneous mycosis, describe the clinical presentation of various subcutaneous mycosis, discuss the various diagnostic uh, modalities available, and describe the methods of sample collection. The next session we broke down is uh, there of uh, the systemic infections with predominant skin lesions. Because uh, there are a few topics like leprosy and all which has not been uh, covered any other part. So we thought in this section we should at least cover them. So like leprosy, scrofuloderma, even the secondary and tertiary syphilis, cutaneous anthrax, cutaneous cryptococcus, the herpes lesion, chickenpox lesions, and so on. So here again, the SLOs are that the student should be able to enumerate the various systemic infection presenting with skin lesions and their etiology, discuss in brief the pathogenesis of various infections, describe the clinical presentations of such infections, describe the various diagnostic modalities available, describe the method of sample collection, and interpret the results of microscopy and culture. So it would be again a small group discussion. Leprosy is important, so we have put that as a separate session. So it would be an interactive lecture where the student should be able to define leprosy, classify leprosy, describe morphology and cultural characteristics of leprobacilli, describe the pathogenesis and clinical presentation in leprosy, discuss the role of immunity in leprosy, so describe the lepra reaction, describe the diagnostic modalities in leprosy, and describe the method of sample collections, the slit skin smears. So the next session is on other wound infections like uh, bites, diabetic ulcer, surgical site infection, burns. So here the student should be able to enumerate the different types of wound infections with their etiology, enumerate the different predisposing factors leading to such infections, describe the pathogenesis and clinical manifestations of various types of wound infections, discuss the laboratory diagnosis for such wound infections. So this can be a self-directed learning followed by group discussions. So that's um, that's what we have done. So again, I want to thank you, thank my whole team, uh, Dr. Rekha and Dr. Jiga, especially Dr. Jiga, he has helped me a lot with the technical and formatting of this thing. And thank you, uh, Sanjay sir, Baby sir, again. So I end my session over here. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So it was a very nice presentation, and I think uh, uh, now we. Can we can see that uh, the boundaries of our subject is getting blurred now, right? Yes, sir. So, we had a lot of difficulty yeah. doing this. Yeah. So once again, what you have done is a very good work. And 
there are several things which need to be first of all put in this whole competency different different sessions you have put it very rightly uh, one thing that as i said earlier when we talk about yes, session as for example right now osteomyelitis right yes sir then yes, sir. session would, session would be interactive lecture right yes sir and it is going the domain is knowledge and level is know how right know both how. will be there yes. uh -huh. so you don't you don't need to put that uh, a different domain and level at each slos right okay sir so one session interactive lecture and it is all right no problem if it is know how it will automatically cover the know also yes sir okay so that is one thing with regards to your all different uh, competency it is an exhaustive list which you have put it yes, uh, once again we'll put it to the uh, audience that uh, how to yes, once again uh, minimize that and make it uh, more homogeneous one of my yes, suggestion can we can we also classify this according to the group of organisms like as for example super like superficial yes. Bacterial infection, superficial parasitic infection, fungal infection, viral infection. Is it possible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it's possible. Actually, with my group, we had this discussion, but then we came to this. Uh, but it was just a discussion. This is again my reply is just a discussion. So we thought okay. since we are going for the syndromic syndromic approach everywhere, so we decided to make it this way. So again, if because that would be easier to do with the lab diagnosis and other parts. Yes, 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 yes. As, as the, uh, the organism wise. Yeah. So what is the advantage over here is that because if you talk about uh, parasitic infection or fungal infection, now what we are going to stress on is laboratory diagnosis, right? So clinical exactly. manifestations they are going to be taught and then laboratory diagnosis. If we talk about uh, mycology. Or fungal infection, mm -hmm. laboratory diagnosis mm -hmm. will be homogeneous, and it will become very yes, easier. Sir. So that is yes. one of my one of a possibility and one of a suggestion. I think if we can do that later on, that we will try. Right? But uh, any suggestion from the audience is also welcome. Yes. And then I think uh, after five minutes uh, we can start with another session. If Dr. Animeredi is over here. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah, this is Dr. Sarat Fatima, sir. Yes. yes. Hello. Yes, madam. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mohamita, it is a good presentation. Very good presentation. Your team effort is very excellent. I would just like to add two more points. One is scabies we have to add in skin infections, superficial skin infections, scabies and pediculosis also. Yes. The, those two are missing. You can please yes, add it. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, madam. I think six six thirty. We can start with the second session. If Doctor Animiradi is over here. No, Animeradi is not there. He joined and then went offline again. Okay. Um. You will have to call him. Yes, I will try to call him. I think by that time we can also continue to discuss. If any other uh, participant like to comment, they can. So good evening. I'm Sai Lila. Yes, Sai Lila. So can you hear me? Yes, yes. Sir, uh, primary skin infections and uh, secondary skin infection also can be there, sir. As, uh, Wound infection comes under uh, secondary infection, whereas uh, uh, primary skin infection is 
ियसिफाइडिनियस Dr. Jigar would like to say something. You are self muted. You can unmute yourself and you can. Dr. Jigar. Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I want to uh, I want to say something uh, regarding whatever we have done as a group work, uh, especially um, the skin and soft tissue infection. Uh, we had lot of discussion regarding skin and soft tissue infection how we can go ahead uh, with that one thing what you have said is uh, uh, the organisms wise uh, that we have also thought but finally we decided to go like this in uh, superficial and deep skin infection and soft tissue infection just because we thought clinically the patient presents with this kind of uh, lesions Uh, if we teach student by bacterial viral and fungal again it would go like earlier uh, way so we thought as per the classification of uh, clinical classification of skin and soft tissue infection we should teach them uh, how the clinical syndrome presents uh, in the skin and soft tissue infection and how can uh, they differential uh, they do differential diagnosis so that is why we have decided Uh, the organism wise uh, uh, classification will be easier to teach but again uh, the differential diagnosis for clinical syndrome will difficult uh, for the students so we have decided uh, to go like this yes what you said is very right right we can have uh, either classification based on similar looking like clinical features right as for yes, example uh, there can be what we can say a rash yes sir and then you go according to rash you go according to ulcer you go according to yes. a, a, such type that, of clinical feature in which uh, you go for differential diagnosis right yes sir and then we can This teach about this also here once for <laughs> yes yes right so that is one way and then ulcerative lesions and then also like this Yes, yes, yes. That is also possible, or we can also go with uh, once again like what what we said that uh, bacterial viral parasitic. But if we go according to that, then both patient at the end will have to give some uh, what we can say a case scenario in which they will be able to integrate. Yes, integrate. yes, sir. Yes, that. Is, yeah, yes. at the end of that, so give them and they will be able to identify what is that. Right, and yes, sir. That that can be done yes they can either way you go and then ultimately they will have to integrate to give a clinical yes, picture sir. And, yes yes that is very right yes sir but, okay sir that is very nice of uh, you all had done a, a good work and thank you sir yes definitely uh, the future will say which is better right because nobody have tried yes. this and we are going because to try it because a lot of trouble uh, so in how this about adding a gent Not the fevers like measles, chicken pox, rubella. Yes, yes, yes. So can we add I, them I, here in the skin infection because they're present? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. We have added the vesicular infections like herpes, chicken pox. So we put it under systemic uh, infections presenting with skin manifestations. Yeah. So we have put it like the skin yeah. of the. 
the best in the presentation. So Dr. Kishore, please share the screen. Okay, so we have got Dr. Kishore on the board. Dr. Kishore, can you hear? Uh, Dr. Kishore, can you speak? I mean, he is connected to audio now. Hello? I think still, still has got some technical problem with regards to audio, I feel. Yes. So can we? Yes, we can't hear you. Okay. You do one thing. You speak in this mobile, and uh, I'll put it on a speaker phone. Yes. Speak. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, right. Can you, can you hear, sir? Uh, can you hear, Doctor Kishore? Yes. Just now, I haven't made a landline call. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Let me save your number. Yes. Uh, just a moment. Yes. Uh, do you hear Dr. Kishore? Yes, sir. I can hear, sir. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, can you hear Dr. Kishore? Yes, yes. Hello. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Then, uh, start. Thank you. 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 Dr. Sanjay, can you hear Dr. Kishore? Yes, yes, he should go on. Okay, right, right. Uh, 
uh, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity to us for the technical debate. Uh, myself, uh, uh, Dr. Kishore, uh, and I'm going to have the uh, you can go up full screen. Yes. There is too much audio glitch. There is too much. Actually, Dr. Bedi.
Kishore has completed. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Kishore, uh, can you hear? 
yes he, he okay so it was a very nice presentation i really appreciate uh, the details which you have presented right uh, with regards to meningitis encephalitis covering the etiological agent and covering the method of uh, uh, diagnosis laboratory especially methods so a really nice presentation i think uh, session is open for any uh, comment from the participants yes dr mukesh kumar has something to comment yes you are self muted yeah good evening sir a nice work from the group also there was some audio glitch technical but uh, the details which is being written uh, i could read each and everything so it was really nice would you like to add something dr mukesh hello yes dr sir yes dr mukesh is uh, i think hello can uh, Dr. Sarvas Fatima has raised her hands. Uh, Bedi sir, Dr. Mukesh is saying something. Let him complete. Yes, Dr. Mukesh. Uh, yes, sir. I was saying just that key, some of the SLOs and the teaching learning method and uh, it's uh, it has been given in one of our competencies initial pages where the so that also from there also we can take one and few uh, SLOs from there also in meningitis, sir. That was it is given nicely there. One one yes. suggestion, sir. Yeah, surely, surely, yes, it can be done. Right, Doctor Bhatima. I it's a good presentation, sir, by Kishore, sir. But what I feel is, uh, as per the IMG requirements for second MBBS students, we can scale down a little bit. It fits more for, at the PG level. If the audience or the participants agree, few points we have to concentrate on. Yes, ma'am. That when once all of us will be uh, working yeah. together, that time a yeah. lot of modification will be coming up, ma'am. Because this is initial yeah. presentations, so maybe yeah. uh, the, what they have thought SLO. So suggestions and all will be doing will working on our uh, full. Uh, classroom yeah. no, as per the yeah. IMG requirements for the phase two yes, student sir. which is more important yes, we need to yes. think of it and we have to derive the SLO so we can yes. a little bit scale down yeah yes but uh, accepted um, nicely ma'am we will do it ma'am we will little bit down little yeah. bit higher side we will come down ma'am one scale down yeah yeah it is yeah. more fitting for the PG level for yes, graduate no, level sir. yes Dr. Fatima what you said is very right when we talk about laboratory diagnosis, there are certain things which can be scaled down. Yeah, yeah. Stain, ZN stain. Then later we cannot talk about culture characters and everything. But uh, mm. taking, taking yeah. sense yeah. all, transportation. Especially, and, yes, yes. Especially encephalitis, sir. Encephalitis. They just need to know the etiology, enumerate the agents. And and encephalitis, we don't go for culture and all those high fi things no, for no, at no. the IMG level. But but they care. should, yeah, they should know about various diagnostic uh, modalities available yeah. for the diagnosis, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Are available, culture yeah. is available like that. Yeah, anyway, serology is the mainstay. So, but culture, uh, other things, uh, molecular yeah. methods, we can just a uh, little bit brief them. That's all. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, very right. The level so that they can write it down, that's all. Yeah. Uh, any query, suggestion from the audience? I think I don't see any uh, raised hand. Dr. Prina, Dr. Prina Balla, madam. So it is not very clear all the competencies in this PowerPoint. We are not clear which is to be taken as a lecture, 
which is to be taken as in a small group discussion any doap is also there so it's not very clear this whole thing and i i do Okay, now this is this is clear. Yeah, this is clear. Yeah. Yes, it's clear. Uh, yes, the PowerPoint slides. It was it was getting a little confusing. This one is fine. Yes, yes. This is the summary, and it is got a good one. And this is the main thing that uh, you know is what we require. Yes, sir. This is good. Thank you. It was my mistake. Uh, so one one request from my side to the group is that what you have, uh, I think, what all this presentation which you are doing, you can forward me to my email and I'll be putting in Google Classroom. So later on, all can also uh, go through that and we will try to put it in our uh, Google Sheet also. Right? You also please try to put it on Google Sheet. Uh, so once again very nice presentation by the group and uh, literally it is up to the detail but some of the thing as uh, suggested by the members can be scaled down but overall it is a very good exercise and good group work so Bedi sir we don't see any uh, hand raised now right now so we can uh, call it a day Dr. So, Bedi? Yes. So uh, we can call it a day. I think we don't see any reason now. Okay. Thank you all. See you again on next Saturday. Okay. Okay. Bye, sir. Bye.